morning everybody it is a beautiful day in freezing cold New Hampshire this morning I am in Dublin New Hampshire and it's actually a really small city but there's a lot of cool things here um, one of them being the Dublin general store which is right there uh, they make some pretty good cookies and stuff like that um, I wanted to just talk about today the fact that the Lord says that like when people get to him someday, when people finally come before him someday, when all of this is said and done, is that he will say to some people, like, be gone, get away from me, I, I never knew you. And so <sighs> I had spoken to a listener of the show before also who was having some problems uh, with Jonathan Cleck and his work. <clears throat> and I had explained that, you know, Judas Iscariot was part of the disciples and he was allowed by Jesus to become a disciple. And he chose on his own to go against the ways of God and to, to betray our Lord and Savior. And I had listened to Zen and uh, Jonathan Cleck. Sorry about the glare for a minute. Um, maybe my bald head can get in the way. Uh, maybe not. Um, I had listened to Zen and Jonathan Cleck for about five years, five or six years, from the very beginning of both of their ministries, really. I think Cleck had been on the radio for a little bit longer than Zen at the time. Um, and, and I love both of them, and I still love both of them, and I pray for both of them. I told you guys that um, the Lord showed me a lot of things through Jonathan Cleck, and he also showed me <clears throat> a dream of Jonathan Cleck. Something about that dream that I knew that the things that Cleck was saying were sort of not antiquated, or if that's the right word, like they they were older. They were like, they were something that like when I was born in 1982 and a lot of the toys that were around at that time are now antiques and they're collectible items and it felt like what Jonathan Cleck was showing me was like collectible items and things of the past or something like that and obviously the things he teaches are from the past but it wasn't the the feeling I was getting it was it was that there was more to tell there was more that he was not discussing we all know that Jonathan Cleck denies Flat Earth. Um, and, and I had personally had a problem with um, his prideful attitude. And it had been getting worse. And so I kind of distanced myself for a while. But then <clears throat> I had this urge to put out the, the video saying that, <clears throat> that he is 100% correct. And he is 100% correct on the topics regarding the Catholic Church. He has a true gift to know those things. And I'm not saying <clears throat> that he is a false prophet or any of that stuff. I'm just saying that the way he has gone with his ministry is away from the revelations that are be being given to a lot of the people that like discuss the same topics. For instance, Zen and Rob Skiba both disagree on some things, but for the main points like Flat Earth the Nephilim, the Serpent Seed, which Rob Skiba only just started agreeing with the Serpent Seed after talking with Zen for a long time, and he's even doing his own, uh, like, TV show or something called Seed, right? which, he's, which both of them are getting tons of flack for, uh, Jonathan Clegg always gets flack, obviously, but there's also Robert Farrell, who doesn't, who knows about Serpent Seed, but it's not one of his um, main topics because Robert Farrell wrote the super gospel and in the super gospel Joseph Jesus's stepfather found Mary pregnant and thought that she had been impregnated just like Eve had been impregnated while Adam was away praying Satan impregnated Eve and Joseph Jesus's stepfather said that and thought that that's what happened when he was away doing carpentry he thought Mary had been impregnated by the devil or a fallen angel. That was a very common knowledge item at that time. But what's happened is just like, 
and I, I know the King James Bible is prophetic. I've said that many times about the Tuning Fork book that proves through the book of Isaiah being 66 chapters that it proves out the King James Bible. But that was prophesied to happen because <clears throat> what happened to Jesus Christ happened to the Word of God over the course of these past 2,000 years. So it was all supposed to happen that way. But just like Jesus changed the water into wine, he saved the best for last. And we, right now, are getting the best for last. And if people, like Jonathan Cleck, do not want to accept those best things that have been saved for last by the same Savior that he proclaims to love and, and receives his gifts from, then that is on him. But if you continue to agree with that and listen to that and accept the fact that he's prideful and he doesn't want to listen to people that have honest questions, he doesn't want to have discourses or discussions if it goes against what he thinks, then that isn't being an open, prayerful, humble brother in the body of Christ. That's just the way that it is. And I'm not saying that I am perfect in any area that I'm telling you about. I'm just saying that this is what has come about. And it almost came about right after I was talking about him being 100% correct. And obviously, back in the day, Zen was not a flat earther. Even his intro to his show says people thinking the earth is flat. And now Zen does think the earth is flat because he researched it and found out that it was true. And then it proved out all of the work that he had done over the past 10, 15 years. So also Rob Skiba, he had to humble himself because he lost about 90% of his sponsorships when he went on like the Hagman and Hagman show or whatever show he was on and he was talking about like flat earth. Everybody that was part of the church, you know, left. The same thing happened as then. Pastor Dean Odell was on his show talking about flat earth and then he started condemning Zen because Zen was saying that the Holy Spirit is feminine, which if you go back to the original translations of the language, it was. And speaking back to about the King James Bible being prophetic, although it was prophetic, the Targums, the original translation, has things in it that mention the Word of God multiple times interacting with the human race and God's people because he is our advocate. I heard that in scripture the other day when I was listening to a Zen and uh, Rob Skiba show that somewhere it says that he's our advocate, but God himself said to Jesus in another text that I forget the name of the text. It says, God calls Jesus our advocate. So you need to think about that. Um, I was listening to a comedian the other day and I thought it was like a wholesome type comedy show. It turned out he started swearing after a couple of things and I was like, oh, never mind. But the comedian even said he would only acknowledge old religions because they have the original document. So like, he's not going to believe in, he said like, screw you to Scientology because they're not even an old religion. They just made that up recently. But if you do go back all the way, originally it was the order of the ancients, the order of Melchizedek, which Jesus is the fulfillment of the order of Melchizedek in the re in reality, because he is a priest and our king, the high king. Originally, that was one of Noah's sons that was Melchizedek. So, think about that. You need to go back to the original. And if you're not reading the Targums, then you really don't know the original translation. So, you can't say that the Holy Spirit isn't feminine. Because what is the family unit right now? The family unit is a man, a woman, and a child. The male child is the one that brings on the name of the family. That is how they even do the genealogies in the Bible, is through the, the male son. That's why every king wants a male son to carry on his name. And that's why in Braveheart, the king was pissed because his son was gay. And obviously, a gay son is not going to carry on your name. And, he, you know, Longshanks is like, well, if, he want, if, if my son wants, you know, his queen to rule in his place, then fine, let him, let, let his queen rule, you know? But that's what I'm talking about. You, the, the destruction of the family unit through Madame Blavatsky's satanic plan, which all Satanists follow to destroy the family unit, is a father, a mother, and a son. A, a trinity. It creates a triangle if you put it into a geom geometric shape. So, think about that for a moment. 
there is a huge push to destroy this family unit that I'm talking about. So if there is a, if the Holy Spirit is a male, that's three males. That is not something that is making man in our image. See what I'm saying? Because when the Lord is speaking about man in our image, he's talking about the family unit. It's like, it's not just, oh, I'm talking about all men. Think about that logically for a minute. What, why are there so many women in the world then? What does that have to... It's not just so we can procreate the earth. And it's not just because, you know, you know, basically it's Adam needed a helpmate. Why would Adam need a helpmate? Because the God the Father has the Holy Spirit. It's But in, in heaven, it's not a sexual thing. We in our fallen state cannot conceptualize even a God that is a spirit. So what? how do we conceptualize that? It's in the visualization that Jesus is a man who came down so that we can connect ourselves in our, you know, finite humanness to our creator because he's a spirit. And in the beginning, nobody really could see anything. God existed, but it was in an invisible realm. And God decided to create the visible realm. And when he did so, Jesus, the light, let there be light, became visible to all the angels. And then they realize, oh, I can see myself. You see what I'm saying? And I've seen this happen in the movie by Disney, Tron. It's almost like a mockery because they know the, the true text. See what I'm saying? Tron, like the dude that like runs Tron, he looks at himself in a mirror and then it creates another person of himself. All those things in those movies are mockery of the truth. But anyways, if you are going to argue with a brother, then at least have the decency to allow that person to come on your show and have a dialogue. Don't get angry. Anger is of the devil. Anger is what caused Cain to kill Abel. Anger is what caused the Pharisees to kill Christ. Anger is what ruins marriages and, and relationships between children and families and parents. Everything that is from chaos, everything that is from chaos and evil is what causes the problems in this world around us. If you just have a love and patience and all the fruits of the spirit, which is the female spirit, because most of the time my dad used to whip my butt. He would just be the one that would go to work and he would whip my butt because that was like the dad position. My mother was the one who was like, oh honey, are you okay? The one, the, the woman, the female is the entity that also sits on eggs so they'll hatch. Just like creation was made by the paraclete, the Holy Spirit, hovering above everything and using that warmth to create life the seeds that are in plants and, and humans and everything that God made. See what I'm saying? And this goes into far greater depths than I'm talking about right now. And as I mentioned before, please, please use dialogue and tell me that I'm wrong in any subject that I'm talking about. I, I encourage you to tell me that I messed up what I said or I wasn't correct about something. I'm just spitting knowledge out. And I hope that somebody might take that knowledge and at least it might cut through the fog of our everyday lives where we are abound to this money-driven, horrible, satanic system where all that matters is what kind of car you drive, what kind of house you have, and how many you know dollars are in your bank account, which matters very, very little. Because yes, you need money to survive. Yes, you need money to help the poor. But Jesus didn't have any of that stuff. And he is the one that people are still arguing and talking about. Jesus is still the topic of almost all conversation, whether people like to admit it or not. And every person that you see that the sun is shining on right now, which is everyone, every person that has breath in their lungs was given that breath by God. And every person that is alive right now has the sun shining on them, whether they're good or bad, because God deems it to be so. The sun shines on the righteous and the unrighteous alike, but yet we still continue. So let's be the people, let's be the unprideful people that prove out God's plan of why he allowed the wheat and the tares to grow together in the first place. So that in the end, he can say, look at my people and what they have done. 
Look at my people and how they, even in turmoil and even in death and even in persecution, they stood strong and that's why they deserve the eternal kingdoms that the fallen angels lost in the beginning. See what I'm saying? Earn the kingdom. Earn the things that Christ has laid up for you in heaven. Earn those things and, and store up those treasures in heaven and help people that nobody helps. Help the people that people are looking down upon because they might have disabilities or they might be poorer than you. Or maybe they're ugly or maybe they smell bad or maybe they're not like you. Maybe they're black and you're white. Maybe they're Chinese and you're white or you're black and you don't like Chinese people or whatever it is. In heaven, in the eternal kingdom, there is no race. There is no race. You will just be a spirit entity. And there will be no black, no white, no Ethiopian. And I was just reading the other day that in the beginning, God made men in three different colors. So realistically, even especially if you believe in evolution, I say this all the time from Destiny Lab song, if you believe in evolution, then you think that we're, we came from apes. So how can apes be racist when really we're all just apes that, that shaved faces, you know, shaved our faces and, and realistically there is no race, there is no color. It's just you're a different tone of ape. Really, right? So so why argue with one another then if that's what you believe, if you believe in evolution? There's really no point to be a racist. It's, it's an evil thing even if you believe in a falsehood, right? So... I'm, I'm just saying all of this so that people might not be prideful and not be so prideful that you don't realize that God has some serious revelations that are coming about in these end times. And you need to be open to that. You need to think, you need to question these things and say, is this true or not? And, and don't just dismiss it because it doesn't go along with the current worldview, the current paradigm that they have created to deceive you. Jesus said, if it were possible, even the elect would be fooled. So how do you deceive an entire population of people? How do you do that? The way that you do that is you put a programming device in these people's living areas and you have that broadcast information according to your design. That is all that television is. And many of the smartest people of the past knew that if something like that was created, that's all that it would take. Even Hitler said, one of the most evil men in the existence of mankind said that if you tell a lie big enough for long enough, people will believe it. The bigger the lie, the easier it is for people to believe in that lie. How big of a lie would it be? For people to think that the earth is round and that it's spinning 1,000 miles per hour. And if Jonathan Kleck does not want to agree with flat earth, then he does not agree with the word of God. So if he doesn't agree with the word of God, then why even preach about anything? Why even talk about his revelations? If you can't agree with what it says in the Bible, it says firmament so many times. They call it sea level. Put, a wa put water in anything, it always finds its level. Even look in a level, there is a bubble inside of a level that tells you if it's flat or not. That is only possible on a flat level plane earth. If it was moving 1,000 miles an hour, a level would not work. Also, when they're doing the math to create bridges and do things like geometric things in civil engineering, they tell you in these books, when you're learning this stuff, to add the math and then subtract the math so you come back to zero. Why would they teach you to do that? And when they train you on the Coriolis effect, which is the the, the change in the, the trajectory of a bullet because of the spin and the rotation of the earth, like it says in the movie Sniper with Mark Wahlberg, that is a false thing too. They put that in that movie because... In training manuals, they don't have the Coriolis effect. They only have the Coriolis effect in the audio speaking of the training people. The, the people that are training you verbally, those are the people that say about the Coriolis effect, but it's not in training manuals because it's not true. 
So I just wanted to get that out there. I'm not even sure if I'm going to publish this yet, but I just wanted to have a conversation about that because it has been pressing on uh, me lately. I did delete all of my Jonathan Cleck videos pretty much. I, I might mention it because he does say things that are true. So sometimes I reference like the things I learned from him in the past, but when somebody changes their tune on something, you know, I no longer like to teach from their objective point. So uh, God bless you guys. Have a great day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.